so this started off as a puzzle um, where you were going to come to the end of this boat deck and actually the front, the top of the boat deck where the first starfish throwing NPC now is, um, was going to be the training section. Um, and the idea was going to be that there was going to be invisible lasers all over this area and you were going to have to spray something into the uh, ahead of you to expose the beams, either smoke or frost or something uh, in front of you. And uh, so it was actually laid out very rectangularly and, and there were all these uh, things to jump on, these floating platforms to jump on and you had to kind of each time you did a jump, you had to kind of look around you with the, for the invisible lasers and then make your next jump. Um, and as we backed away from the, the puzzly, slower gameplay, that was the first idea that went away. Yeah. So then, then what came? Well, there was also the idea of once you got to the rear set of the, the buoys that floated on the water, that there was a giant fish that was sitting below Oh, yeah, you. the giant fish. And he was <laughs> the one that paced you and made you want to move forward faster and get through the level, or otherwise he'd come up and gobble you up. Yeah, so the giant fish, he, he got cut. Giant fish got cut. We definitely learned a thing or two about physics engines and games. How oh, yeah. the predictability of something animated over relying on the physics engine to work itself out yeah. Is usually, <laughs> yeah. The physics engine tends to work well in, in really clean, isolated situations, yeah. or in shrapnel, or in other situations where you want good-looking, sort of ambient animation, but not as good for stuff that has to work 100% of the time, right. super predictably. Um, and then I think environmentally, I think this was one of our our first levels that really had a good kind of. Um, I don't know, misty, really rich kind of textured feel to it. You know, the fire on the side, right. which you can see from outside and the approach even. Um, All the, like, the moss hanging off of yeah. everything and just kind of... Yeah, a lot of really kind of organic richness in this level, especially back, you know, when there was fish and all that stuff, the waters, you know, being space warped and, you know, has some interesting stuff going on and, you know, all the surface effects that the texture artists put in, all really, I think, made this a really good looking level um, and one that we kept investing in because it was something that, you know, the surroundings were so appealing that we wanted to make sure we, we used it uh, yeah. in, a, in a really constructive way. The um, wisps floating through the air and whatnot, but with the fire in the background brought out a great richness in the environment. I remember when I first loaded it into the world after it had just gone through this massive change and it was just one of the most spectacularly beautiful levels that we had at the time. Uh, that it was just exciting to go back and, and play uh, through it. Um.